welcome everybody. First of all, I want to let you all know that I'm recording this session. And the reason I'm recording it is so that we can put it up on our accepted students page. So anybody who is not able to be here tonight uh, can watch us. Can everybody hear me? Oh, I got thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, this is not the revisit day we thought we would be having. We love our home at uh, 333 Forest Street in Waltham. We wish you were there with us. It is an amazing place that uh, when it is filled with students and faculty is filled with love and learning and light and fun. Um, but because we always look at the bright side and we are innovative and creative, here is our virtual Zoom session tonight. So tonight's session is um, question and answer with Dr. Dahlia Hoffman. Many of you know Dr. Dahlia Hoffman. She is um, sort of new to GAN. She officially on July 1st as our head of school, but she really was involved in GAN well before that. Um, she had been at GAN for over a year visiting, getting to know the, the community, the students, the faculty, the staff, um, parents, board members, so she's really well versed in everything GAN. Um, she is brilliant. She is an educator um, like none I've ever met. She is a visionary. She is um, an unbelievable leader for our school. Sorry if I'm embarrassing you, Dr. Hawkman, but we are so lucky to have her, and I'm going to turn it over to her so she can introduce herself, share where she's come from, and where what she's seen again, where we're, we're going, and then open it up to questions. Two quick Zoom um, protocols. Um, it's helpful if people mute themselves, so if the dog barks or the doorbell rings, probably Amazon packages, um, we're not interrupted. And we do have a chat function, so you can feel free to chat questions either to me um, privately, to the whole group, um, you can raise your hand, so feel free to reach out. We want this to be interactive and welcoming for everybody. So welcome, and Dr. Hawkman, thank you very much. Great, thank you, Wendy. Can everyone hear me? Okay, great. Thanks, Wendy, and the, and the wonderful GAN admissions team for putting this together. Again, this is not how we would have preferred to meet all of you, um, but we are thrilled to see uh, so many of you here uh, tonight. Um, and before we begin, I want to thank, I want to introduce our current GAN parents or ask them to introduce themselves and then have all the current GAN students wave on Zoom. So let's start with our current GAN parents, just saying hello and, and your, the names and the years of your students, of your children. So let's start, I guess, with the Fosters. You go. You go. All right. Um, <laughs> it's William and Rachel Foster. We are the... Um, Proud parents of a recent graduate uh, last year, an 11th grader, Jacob and Trudy, um, Lucy, who will be entering the ninth grade class this coming fall, and then Lila, uh, a fifth grader uh, at Schechter right now. Great, thank you. And then I think the next on my screen is Stephanie. Hello, I am Stephanie Listikin. I am the mom of a 10th grader, Ami, and I also have a 10th grader, Gam, and then I also have a 6th grader, uh, Shira, who's at the Carroll School. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. And Deb, you're, up, you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm Deb Margolis. I am a proud parent of uh, also a graduate from last year who's home from college very unhappily. And the parent of an 11th grader currently, and I'm also the president of the GAN Parent Association. So welcome, thrilled to have you on the call. Great, thanks, Deb. And then next we have, I think, well, the man, Robeson family are both perspective and current, so we'll say hello. Uh, Michelle, also perspective and current. Uh, any other current families? Okay, and then GAN students, thank you so much. This is a great showing. Can everyone just wave? This is great. Um, so we have joining us a real diverse group of, of students from different classes and different with different interests as well. I may hand off some of the questions to all of you um, because I think you, you all have really great answers for some specific uh, questions. So um, let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, I think that Wendy or Emily might have to do it. Okay. Can you do it now? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to start um, with an old camp song from Jewish summer camp that we all may just sort of say sometimes, or some of us might have learned it when we were younger, some of us might have not. Um, all of the world is a very narrow bridge, and the essence is not to be afraid at all. And I knew this song when I was a kid, but lately this song has just all the more resonance as we are facing a time of deep uncertainty and challenge for our school, for our families. And I want to encourage all of us to imagine ourselves on a narrow bridge, especially as we're about to enter the season of Pesach, of Passover, and we're really experiencing this notion of freedom when we feel very unfree. I don't know about all of you, but I feel very confined and life is narrowed. We're, we're, we're all stuck at home. Um, our choices are limited. And just to encourage us to, to walk across and to not be afraid. Um, and that may be different for each of you in your own situation. Um, but one of the beautiful things about GAN and of a Jewish education is that, is that we can reach to the wisdom of our tradition to help us in moments like this. And I think there's just the sort of this really beautiful, helpful notion of feeling and experiencing freedom um, as modern people um, and the absence of freedom right now and what, what does freedom look like and maybe freedom today was the sun came out and we were able to be outside. Um, so I would encourage all of you, and it's helped me think about this, you know, we can't be the perfect parents, the perfect teachers in this scenario to let go a little bit. The, the, the bridge is narrowing. Um, you know, my kids are not eating as well as I would like. They're not necessarily doing as much exercise as I would like. The bridge has narrowed. Our expectations have narrowed, but we're crossing together across. And I think this is particularly poignant for those of us um, with kids who are in transitional grades, you know, eighth grade, twelfth grade, in college, um, this is a transitional moment in our families and our in our children's lives. And I can imagine for many of you eighth grade parents um, to be in this moment um, with children in eighth grade. I, I just want to sort of share the empathy that we all have for all of you and for your situation, trying to make a choice around something as momentous as high school in this time, um, given these constraints. Um, so I'll leave you with that sort of image. Um, it's helped me uh, as an educator and as a parent as we approach Pesach, um, Passover. I wanna just share with you, I've been at GAN now for nearly a full year. Um, I, I visited a fair amount before I arrived formally. And you know, every school has a slogan and I always sort of wonder what's behind those slogans. And I want to share what I've seen as a new head of school in terms of what's behind the, our slogan. As many of you know, our slogan is to be known, to be challenged, and to love school. Um, and it truly is remarkable. I've worked, this is my 20th year working in high school education. I've worked in small public school, uh, large public schools, small charter schools, very innovative, very thoughtful models uh, of education. And the GAN Academy, community and approach and teaching and real care for the students uh, truly stands out to me as something that's well beyond the slogan. So just a few points on each of these three buckets or three categories. Um, in terms of being, being known, um, the warmth of this community is truly astonishing. Um, the way that students look out for one another, students, teachers look out for students, parents look out for one another, and, and, and I think nothing has shown this to me more than the past few weeks, the way our community has come together and helped one another through a very difficult time. Um, the second piece, which is, trust me, very rare in high school, is really a kind student culture. There is such, a, to be a cool kid again academy is to be nice. And just this premium on niceness and kindness and maturity among teenagers is really remarkable to me. Um, and not something I take lightly, having always worked in high schools and seeing a lot of other high schools. Um, and, nice, and kind culture doesn't mean everyone's the same. It means that people are appreciated and still kind despite the differences. Um, the third piece about being known, the adults in the building are extremely invested in student success. Um, you know, so much so that, you know, I, I had one student who has a teacher three periods in a row and the teacher is still emailing them today to see if they're 
you know, understood the concept. Um, and this is on a virtual GAN Academy program. Um, it is tremendous to watch how much our teachers and our advisors and our support staff truly care about the success and, the, and that our and, and each student and not that the students will just succeed, but they'll really thrive. Um, in a lot of schools, it's just about passing kids through and here we're really looking to figure out who is this child coming in and how do we grow them and how do we help them thrive. Uh, the second piece, as many of you know, know be challenged. Um, increasingly, as we, as we accumulate more research and education, um, especially with recent advances in brain imaging um, and scanning, the education field now knows a lot more about how young adult brains uh, develop and evolve and what skills are necessary for what future elements of success. Uh, so looking at that, that body of research, this notion of transferable skills, we all knew instinctively, but it becomes more important than ever in this age of Google to make sure we are graduating kids who are excellent writers, excellent communicators, excellent problem solvers, have skills that can be applied across different disciplines. Um, at the same time, you don't wanna lose the discipline specific rigor, the depth and the breadth. So I believe that GAN has both an emphasis on interdisciplinary skills that will help students succeed in college and beyond, as well as an opportunity to go really deep in a specific discipline, uh, which is also important because academic content still matters. Um, it's not all about skills. Um, finally, with the opening of our new innovation space, I have just seen in every subject the explosion of hands-on, creative, immersive learning. Um, and, and that really excites kids and gets kids really passionate about learning. Finally, and you know, this piece about loving school, I never believed it, um, but I can tell you when we announced that uh, about two weeks ago, and the students on this on the Zoom call can attest to this, when we announced to the student body that we would be shifting GAN Academy to a virtual GAN at home experience, we had a lot of students that last day on a Friday lingering in the lobby saying, what do you mean I can't go to school? I love school. School is my happy place. I love going to school. Um, so I think that's very unusual for any student, for any high school student. Um, and it is really true about GAN. Uh, students, parents tell me that their kids who before they came sort of re were reluctant about going to school, jump up and get on the bus or get into the car or, you know, however they're getting to school. Um, there's a real excitement and interest in being here. Um, for me personally, as an educator, the most important thing is to inspire curiosity and love of learning. We want to create a group of folks who are not just learning for the grade or for the external reward. It's all about sparking curiosity and giving folks, giving students skills to pursue other domains of learning. Um, and finally, again, going back to the research on adolescent development, for those teenagers and those adolescents who are connected who are developing a purpose and a sense of passion and can go deep and feel really um, confident about a specific topic, uh, it really helps in terms of college success and beyond. Um, so these are, this is what I see so far at GAN. Uh, it is a tremendous place. Uh, it is more than a school, it is community. And I would say, you know, unfortunately in times of hardship, I think the true colors of institutions and people come through and the past two or three weeks have really shown me, I knew this place was special, but just sort of the depth of how special this community is. Um, so I will end there. And then I guess we can stop the share. Um, I think we should open it up to questions. I have a poem I wanna share with you at the very end, but let's stop and we'll open it up to questions. I'm gonna ask Wendy and Emily to help facilitate um, so you can either raise your hand or put your questions in the chat. And students and parents, current students and parents, I may pass some of the questions on to you. Dr. Hugman, we have a question. Um, many public schools have not gone to online learning and we've seen that GAN has. Can you tell us a little bit about how you made that happen and how the, the students have changed from learning in school to learning online? Sure. 
you know, I've, this is, I've worked in public schools my entire career and I have a really, you know, big place in my heart for the mission of public schools, but there's something about a smaller independent school that allows for a level of agility and flexibility and a nimble um, nature, entrepreneurial nature that just in the public sector, we, we don't see. Um, so our ability to pivot, to purchase Zoom, to purchase software, you know, even some of these small business transactions allowed us to, in, ver in almost 48 hours, shift our entire program to an online program. We, our teachers all did a tremendous amount of PD in a professional development in about three days. Um, and what, you know, and I think that's impressive for sure, uh, the sort of agility, flexibility, nimbleness, sort of entrepreneurial nature of our school. And what I think has been even more impressive is that our, our teachers, and we, and by the way, we don't know, we haven't, you know, the governor has said we're gonna be um, away from school until May 4th for sure, but we don't know how long this is gonna last. And without even knowing the time frame, our teachers have been tweaking the program. So we gave a survey last, how many of you took a survey and gave us some feedback of the students? Yeah. So, yeah. so you'll be happy to hear the students on the call that the number one piece of feedback from, the, there's two, two or three pieces of feedback from the students on how we can improve our virtual program. And we're taking that and now tweaking it and doing more professional development with our teachers, which again, you know, in other sectors of education, we're just not able to have that level of continuous improvement. Um, for the students on the call, one of the pieces of feedback was a later start time, which is not surprising. Um, so we're looking into it. Uh, part of the challenge has to do with, uh, you know, work schedules and so forth. Um, the other piece of feedback was about figuring out how to have less screen time homework after school and so forth. So this notion of continuous improvement um, and adapting, even in a, a virtual school program that may be only three more weeks is remarkable. Um, and I believe personally, just so you know, the best schools are not necessarily, every, no school is perfect. Every school has areas for improvement and areas of challenge and strength and so forth. The best schools are those that relentlessly focus on improvement, are very transparent, and just continuously improve through a process. You know, you can't change all the time, but improvement is key for any institution, especially schools. Thank you. The questions are rolling in. Um, the next one is, what would you change or improve about GAN? I assume that's overall, not just in this current time. Uh, so as, outside of the virtual. Mm -hmm. It's a great school, let me think. Well, let me, let me put that to, the, to some of the parents or, teach, or students, because you've been here longer than I have. Some of our kids, we know you love school, but if, could you, if you could change one thing, what would it be? Any students or parents, feel free to chime in. They love it. Nothing. Nothing. You can be honest. It's all right. Well, I would just say, can, can you hear me? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hi. Right. So, um, Linda, yeah, can you just, Linda, can okay. you introduce yourself? Because we just wanted oh. to, the, the, yeah, public yes, parents. Yes, I'd be happy yeah. to. Yes, I'm I'm Linda Skolnick, and I am the parent of one a former GAN student graduated in seventeen, and a current GAN student. She's a sophomore. So I started the whole. My husband and I started the whole GAN journey in. Um, in 2012. Um, I think what is amazing about GAN is just it allows the, the, the student to discover who, who they really are. And I think that's part of what, what the tagline is, but it, but it actually is true. And to, to nurture that and to, to really be recognized for, for who they are. Um, and and every, every kid comes out an individual. Um, and I, I see that, I've seen it with my son who's in college and with my daughter, and it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing process what happens over the four years. And the confidence that, that, that is developed in, and, and built out of, out of that process is, is quite something. I, I, did, I did think of an answer to this question, which is that sometimes too much of a good thing can be too much of a good thing. And I think we, you know, everyone knows we have, a, we have a long day that's full of wonderful options and choices. And I have heard from some parents and some students, it would be great to be able to have even more room to try and to really go deep in both the arts and robotics and engineering and so forth. So part of what, and our faculty has taken this uh, feedback and really thought about it. 
And one way to do that is to combine subjects and to sort of look at interdisciplinary connections. Um, this past winter, we did a professional development with teachers where we asked teachers to partner up uh, with a member of a different department and to imagine what it would look like for to explore, for example, music in physics or, you know, Spanish language and literature in Jewish studies with sort of the, you know, the, the golden age of Spain and so forth. So um, ways to allow for even more options and choice in our curriculum is an area where I think both our faculty and our environment are demanding us to move forward. I have a question that's sort of, I think it's geared more towards the kids actually. Oh, did, William, did you want to add something? Oh, no, I thought there were a couple student hands up, so I'd just be oh. curious to oh. hear what oh, yeah. Hi, sorry, I'm having a hard time just like, you know, getting in there. It feels weird not raising my hand. Okay, I'm Julia Patkin. I'm a senior at Gann Academy. Um, so I, I think I can speak for a good amount of the students, at least the seniors who are in the room just because I know them pretty well. Um, but like when we were all quiet because you guys asked like what we, if we could change anything about GAN, what would it be like? For me, I was actually racking my brain thinking and it's like honestly nothing. And I'm, I know we're trying to get you guys to come to GAN and I think everyone should come to GAN, but I'm not trying to say this just to do that. Like this is super honest and truthful, um, like literally nothing. I think there's a place for everyone, which is what's so amazing about GAN. Like the, there's sports, there's theater, there's art, there's um, ro like robotics, there's literally everything and everyone can find their own path. Also, there's like a different teacher for everyone. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, so some teachers, certain students connect with and others not so much. And, but like you'll, if you ask around and ask who, what teacher everyone connects with the most, you'll get a lot of different answers, which I think is really cool. And it's like, it's not like there's one teacher that everyone loves. There, there are those teachers, but they're just like, I don't know, there's a place for everyone and someone for everyone. Is there another student? Noah? Answer. Yeah, I can answer. Uh, my name's Noah. I'm also a senior. Um, I went to JCDS. Um, I also really love GAN. Um, yeah, this is definitely a tough question. Um, I think Dr. Hoffman talked about it a little bit is um, the long days are pretty tough at GAN. Um, that's definitely something that's different from GAN than say public school. But um, there, it's, it's not like you're learning all day and it's a really hard day. Um, it kind of just, you're, you stay at school and um, it makes you love the campus and love the people around you just as much. Um, but those are longer days where you're not going to get home as early. Um, but like, for example, on, on a Tuesday, I'll have, you know, my classes till 3.40 and then improv and then, um, and then sports. And so like long days can get tough, but I love the campus, love the people. And that, that's also attributed to those long days. Can I also say, Noah, to the parent, to this point for the parents, having worked in schools where the, the students get out at 2.15, 3 and so forth, it actually is really nice, I think, from the parents' perspective to know that it's all connected, that so many of our students are staying and doing sports and doing plays and activities. And um, it's very reassuring to know where kids in this age range are, essentially, with the same adults and same people and same environment. Um, I, I've seen the other options, too. And it, um, you know, it is, it is longer for the students. But we have blocks in the middle of the day. So it doesn't, as Noah said, it doesn't feel like you're going from one intense experience to the next. So, so students have free blocks. Also, I'll, 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 add, oh. sorry, um, like the time throughout the day, it's really easy to get homework done then. So when you get home, you don't have as much homework to do at home and you can like spend more time with your family. And when you're home, it really feels like you're home versus going home and having like five hours of homework and like not being able to leave your room. So that's really nice. Ariana, did you want to add something? Is that your hand? Yeah, um, just to add on, like, I really like how, again, I have a lot of, like, control over my schedule. So, like, with the free blocks, um, like, last year, I was, I had eight classes, and I felt like that was a lot. So, this year, um, I did half the year with eight classes with an arts elective, and then I took the rest of the year um, having one free, and I feel like I've gotten a lot of work done, and I feel like 
it's also been a really good opportunity to like meet with teachers and you know catch up on things so I'm really grateful for that. I should mention Ariana you went to Shady Hill for middle school is that right and yep. Julia went to Rashi so you're seeing a very diverse um, group of students here. Yep. Nathan was your hand up? Uh, yeah actually relating to what Ariana said um, I did a very similar thing my junior year, actually, I was able to do an independent study in place of one class, um, which I think was really interesting now looking forward. I'm a senior at GAN, um, so I'll be going to college next year. And, you know, looking forward to what college is going to be like, I think that that ability to, to a degree, build your schedule to what you want it to be. Obviously, you know, they're the classes you have to take every year. Um, but the flexibility that you get in the amount of classes that GAN offers and the ability to choose what you really want to learn about. Like being able to specialize and take like a really awesome engineering class this year was something really great. Um, but also being able to integrate things like independent studies into your schedule and like really being able to focus on specifically what you want to learn about is something that I think GAN does really well. It's something I'm personally looking forward to at college, but it's also something I'm so grateful I was able to experience during high school. As you can see, our seniors are really sad that they're missing such an important part of their GAN experience. And we're holding them in our hearts and we know this is hard for everybody, but especially for them. Um, we did have a question about how GAN students are thinking about next year and coming back, recognizing that this is a challenge. Um, so I think we have some kids that are not seniors, but for kids who are coming back next year, can you think about what it will be like to be back again? Anna? Um, I think like the transition back as um, Dr. Hockman was saying before about how the teachers work really hard, like to put us online. I think they're going to work just as hard to bring us back into the classroom. And I know personally, I'm gonna be really happy to be in the physical classroom with my teachers and with my classmates, um, just to restore a sense of normalcy. And I think, I mean, learning at home is great, but it's not definitely not the same as learning in a GAN classroom. Kobe? Um, yeah, I jumping off of Hannah, I'm Kobe Dinaragis, um, junior and came from JCDS. Um, uh, the teachers at GAN really uh, work really, really hard to um, give the students success and they'll work um, even out, uh, outside of hours if they need to and meet with students and they really want students to succeed, um, which is super special about GAN. Uh, so I have no doubt that um, teachers will help students transition back into on-campus learning. We have other kids that want to speak. Yeah, I can also add something. I will not be coming back next year, but um, I know that I really feel like GAN is really good at responding to tragedy and uh, hard events. Um, I think that like after we have a lot of assemblies just to like talk about hard stuff that's happening in the world um, or in people's lives, um, that, and I think that's really unique to GAN, um, uh, how they help students get through hard times. Um, so I think that GAN is, is really well prepared for something like this in the future. I was going to say something then, Ariana, do you want to just uh, close us off? Go ahead, oh, yeah. Um Yeah, just to add on to that, like with this whole situation as well, I feel like one of the main messages that like the GAN faculty have been communicating to us has been like, like, we're here for you, like, reach out to us like you can and like in almost every email that we've gotten about it I think there's always been a line about like if if you're feeling some sort of way like you can talk to these people like we, like we're always here to support you and I don't know I just uh, you know it's, a, it's just a community sense of warmth that I feel like like resonates with everyone. The other thing for um current for parents who have eighth graders um coming into ninth grade the, you know, the, the, I've, I've witnessed this this year, how the school inculcates this special culture is very intentional. So there are seniors who are Ozrim, Ozos, who help with the ninth graders and help um, inculcate aspects of this culture of the kindness and appreciating one another and talking about our situations um, very deliberately. And our team has also thought through how to do the transition um, next year in an even more deliberate manner. Um, now we'll have to sort of, again, in this process of continuous improvement, tweak it to acknowledge all of what has transpired. 
Um, but there's a real, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that the affective and the cognitive domain of learning are very connected. So to be motivated to learn, motivation and the social interpersonal nature of learning is really, it's, it's, it's a real thing. Um, so thinking through how we can both help students, you know, talk about their experiences um, and also develop the resilience of this was a really hard experience uh, and, you know, and how, what did I learn? What did I grow? See, I, I learned something about myself um, that I could pursue this challenge. I could learn a new talent. Um, you know, I think there's this fine balance in terms of social emotional support of students where we also want to have them feel confidence from being in the heart. It's okay if things are hard. Um, and to take pride in overcoming the hard, the hard nature and of life, um, rather than saying, you know, oh, this was so hard. We're trying to erase the obstacle, and that's all the literature on resilience and so forth. Um, I, I do want to say something on a different topic that I got a question um, offline about preparing students for academically, you know, rigorous college acceptance processes and so forth. Um, this was a, a question one off. I don't know if others share it. Um, so I, I interview, I went to Yale College for undergraduate in Columbia for graduate school. And I do interviews of high school until this year. Um, I did interviews for high school applicants to Yale. And I can tell you that the high school students whose teachers know them and work with them and can speak about them in really specific ways come across so well in the college application process. Um, and students who are passionate, inspired, curious, love learning, that, that counts for a lot in, in this sort of day and age of college application um, world. Um, and I think again, you know, as Julia said, everybody has their person who can really speak with a lot of precision and detail about the student. Um, and the student's journey. Fosters. What what what, what, what questions? The fosters are going to chime in about. Um, oh, I got a note saying, "Ask the fosters how they felt." Gan prepared their son. Oh, okay. So so um so our son Jacob graduated last year. He actually is. Um, he got a commission to go to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. So he's the first, um, I think, from any of the Jewish day schools to go there. And West Point is extremely rigorous. I mean, just in terms of the, 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 the hours that are demanded, the precision that's demanded. Um, and, and, I, and, you know, the bottom line is he's excellently prepared. I mean, they, the average grade at West Point is a C. You know, there's no grade inflation going on there. And he is... Um, and then she has this and it muted it. And anyway, and he's doing he's doing exceptionally well in his class, and he sees kids from you know every district in the country, um, and feels like um, and feels like the the level of rigor prepared him for the rigor there, and and particularly in the sort of discussion and analytical and synthesis phases, um, he's just at a different level than what you know he sees from the other kids. Um, and I, and and the note I guess I would have on that is that that I actually. Um, you know, I actually wondered when, when our kids started in ninth grade whether it was going to be sufficiently rigorous. Um, but there's a, and I assume this is conscious, Dolly, or Dr. Hockman, you can, you can say, but it strikes me that GAN becomes more rigorous with each year, right? That, that, it's, that it's a gentler ninth grade, a more rigorous 10th grade, a particularly rigorous 11th grade, and um, in any event. So we are very satisfied. And I'll chime in, the, just as Nathan mentioned, that our son Jacob did have the opportunity to have do some independent studies with teachers at GAN. Um, one who's no longer there, but um, it was a, a private independent study with Jacob and one other student. And the teacher who had gotten their PhD at Stanford shared that they, he thought that the class he was running was on par with any university class that he would have as a, you know, taught um, at the graduate level. I mean, that it was intense and it was you know, just an example of how GAN meets the students where they are. So, um, you know, I think uh, there are definitely aspects of GAN that Jacob misses very much at West Point, but I think he uh, does not question that he is well prepared. I'll also just share to, to Dr. Hockman's point about teachers that know your students can write good recommendations. 
one of the teachers that was a recommender for Jacob, he picked because uh, the teachers are so thoughtful in their in their comments in the report cards every you know every semester, and um, and know the kids so well. But Jacob literally just asked one of the teachers, "Can you can you write that in the recommendation? I'll I'll, I'll go with that." And uh, <laughs> anyhow, I assume that's what was written. But. Yeah, I think building off of everything that's been said, um, as a senior, I'm well as of recently on the back end of the college admissions process, um, and. I think that the one thing that I'm really appreciative of at GAN is that yes, they focus on academic rigor and the toughness of courses and making sure that you have the numbers to succeed. But additionally, there's this really strong attitude that there's so much more about you than your numbers and the course titles that you have on your transcript. They really, I mean, through my college admissions process, I was constantly you know, pushed to think more about the extracurriculars. You know, What else have I done outside of the classroom? And I think that the strength of that attitude, not just in senior year during the college admissions process, but throughout the entire time, it's not just about the classes, but like, who are you as a person, basically? You know, what are you excited about? What have you done with what you're excited about? Um, and I think that the focus on that helps me write better essays, think better about what I want to do in college. And, you know, results wise, I feel like it helped me a lot. So college preparedness from an, from an academic perspective, yeah, it's really good. Um, but I think what makes GAN so unique is the college preparedness, not only from the academic side, but from the non-academic side. Yeah. I also want to differentiate between high schools that, thank you, Nathan, um, high schools that prepare students to get into college and high schools that prepare students to succeed in college, because there's actually a really interesting literature now showing that those are completely different skills. Um, and actually we have, you know, a phenomenon where kids are in colleges and not able to cope, even though they've gotten in. So I think looking at those skills, and if you, if you think about those skills and you read a little bit about it, it's fascinating. You know, it's really skills about persistence and self-advocacy and study skills and organization and goal setting. Um, and those are very much embedded in the GAN curriculum. Um, especially, you know, sort of notions of teaching students how to speak up for themselves and ask teachers and go to ask for help. I, at the risk of um, embarrassing her, one of my senior advisees is on the call and we're doing our, our, of our project together. I don't think Julia will mind if, I t if you can wave. Um, and so Ma'avar is our senior uh, capstone research project where seniors pick a, a topic of interest and ask a faculty member to be their advisor and we work over an extended period of time. So with, with Julia's project, you know, I haven't been doing it for her. She's doing research with other institutions. Julia's um, going out and asking uh, professionals in the field to visit, the, uh, she's working on a project around mental health and how schools are, are handling mental health for, uh, for students. Um, and I'm saying to her, I'm not, I'm not calling these schools for you. You're doing it. And so some of these life skills that we're teaching our students um, around long-term projects, persistence, goal setting, advocacy, being out in the world, those are the skills actually that, that our kids will need to succeed in college and beyond. In addition to all the things that get you in, but they're really different. They're different, they're different skills. Julia, I don't know. I, I picked on you, so I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Um, yeah, I totally agree with what you said. Um, just a very vivid memory I have is Dr. Hawkman and I were sitting down talking about me emailing different institutions to get in touch with, um, just to visit and see what they had going on. Um, and I, I was like typing up an email and I had Dr. Hawkman read it. And she just told me like a few words to change to make it more professional. And those are, that's just like such little, really important things to learn for life. Just to, you know, the way you present yourself in the world has a lot to do with how you're perceived. Um, so just learning to be more professional was really helpful, especially learning from such accomplished people as many GAN teachers are. Like you can really get a sense of, it, it's just very inspiring and they teach us a lot and it's amazing. 
I was going to chime in. Um, I'm Michelle and I have a senior again and an incoming ninth grader um, next year. And I, I really think that again, this has this reflective student and teaching culture so that the kids really learn to look at what they're doing and ask themselves the question, why am I doing this? Do I like what I'm doing? How can I improve what I'm doing? It's not a culture of perfection. It's a, a culture where they're allowed to kind of take a deep breath, fail, try again, you know, iterate, go forward. And there's not, it's this room to breathe, I think is a critical aspect of the school. They don't, I don't think, because I have other children at different schools where it's really driven on homework testing and it's a push, push, push model. And I feel like, again, there's a lot of chances for them to push themselves. But then if it doesn't work out the way they expected to kind of regroup and keep going without feeling like they failed in any way. And they get to come home and have dinner with the family. They have time to explore who they are outside of school entirely. So if one math class isn't going as well as they would like, they feel good about themselves because they're doing something out. You know, it's, it's like a very balanced culture and an honest culture. Um, and they're, they come forward to their teachers and they share those highs and lows um, in a really safe and secure way. And I just think that's why the kids are, are so nourished. And that's why they flourish because people accept them for who they are, lift them up as high as they can go, challenge them to go even just a little step forward further but if they don't, it's an okay, it's okay. And, and then they know who they are at the end of the day. And it's, it's really, it's fabulous. I wish, I wish more places in the community in general were, were as supportive and as, as wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. I actually think that's a great um, segue to be able to talk a little bit about our parent community. Dr. Hoffman, I hope that's okay. Because not only are we a community of students and you hear, you've heard from our students and from our parents about how students are supported in school academically, socially, emotionally, uh, ready for college and beyond. But our parent community is also a really important part of the GAN experience. And I know we, I mean, Deb Margolis is here. She's the president of our GPA. I don't wanna put you on the spot, Deb, but we also have other current parents here, some of who more involved or not involved. But um, I'm wondering if our parents just wanna to speak to, on that briefly about how important community is at GAN. And especially now, some of the things that we're doing online, like meditation for parents and parent groups in this, in this particularly difficult time, but even, if, even beyond. Well, I have to say, I was not surprised when those offerings came about because it's kind of always been the, the case with a lot of Jewish learning, um, the self-defense class that I think I was a part of a couple of years ago. It's sort of, we, we get to share in the, in the GAN experience with our kids. Um, and we, and uh, we also have built our little sub-communities when we meet parents in those classes that usually meet in the evening or maybe before school, there's a real chance to connect with other parents. But the fact that we're being thought of as learners as well, and, and and our growth is continuing is is wonderful but it's a getting involved with parents um, I know in high schools a lot of times um, parents are sort of that they don't get involved uh, they don't get involved in the in their in their PTGs PTAs and again it, it seems to continue people want to get to know each other and make connections um, as we are already connect our kids are connected Thank you. and I I'll jump in here too our certainly our goal for parents is to provide opportunities for parents to be involved at whatever level they wish to be involved. If parents don't want to be involved, we certainly don't want to hound them. But for parents who either want to know more about what their kids are doing during the day or just want to connect with other parents in meaningful ways. And I think if we've, we've learned a lot of things in a very short time over the last few weeks, we've learned them personally, professionally, for our children, for ourselves. But I think we've certainly learned about the importance of connection and how debilitating isolation can feel. So we mobilized really very quickly. I kind of put out an APB to people involved in the GAN Parent Association to look for volunteers to try to get activities out there and postings out there just to provide opportunities for people to feel connected, to support their kids, and frankly, to support one another as parents because we're very busy supporting our kids and supporting our own parents perhaps, and we have to be sure that we're also in a position to support one another. So it's a very open and welcoming community that way. Thank you. Do any other parents wanna chime in? If not, we can pivot back to the, the kids who are why we're here and to Dr. Hoffman. 
Um, Dr. Hoffman, I don't, I know I'm being mindful of the time and we've, we've got just a few more minutes. Um, I just wanted to add a few more things because, you know, I think we're all feeling this narrowness right now. Um, and so always a teacher, I prepared a few, um, teachings for this group to share with you that you could potentially take home to your family for Passover. Um, so I wanted to end by sharing some of those for whatever, you know, for whatever it's worth. I think it's always, my, as a parent myself, I like to go to parent meetings and actually learn something and have my brain be stimulated. So I want to leave you with a few teachings. Um, but before I do, there's one thing that we haven't talked about, which is the Jewish pluralism. Um, we have talked about diversity. And, you know, I, you know, without going into it, I live a very pluralistic life and I'm connected to very many elements of the Jewish community. But no matter where you are on the spectrum of Jewish identity, one thing that really attracted me to GAN in making my own choice about coming to GAN a year ago is the notion about of teaching students to dialogue across difference, regardless of what that difference might be. So in other words, in this day and age, one of our biggest challenges as educators uh, is that kids don't really know how to just disagree with one another in a respectful, you know, direct manner because often, you know, they'll text or um, not really have those skills. And so again, the diversity of the Jewish experience and the choice and the options uh, allows for a community of, uh, or a sort of a ecosystem where young people are practicing these skills so that when they leave the school and they go to their dorm rooms, they go to West Point, they go to Wesleyan, wherever they're gonna go and you have people on this call who are representing the different you know, walks of life from our graduates, these, the skill set of talking through a, a problem or you know, respectfully disagreeing is really, really important uh, now more than ever. Um, and I think that's really the richness uh, the, the school is founded on this model of a pluralistic school that's very welcoming of families from very different walks of life. Um, and so I'd encourage you, you know, you may come to these forums and say, oh, this school's not for me, I'm different, you know, all of them are much more Jewishly connected, or the school's not for me, you know, uh, I'm more Jewishly connected than the other folks. I can assure you everyone in the school feels in some way <laughs> connected and disconnected at the same time. It is a very diverse sort of multifaceted community we, where we are celebrating the difference, um, teaching kids to respect the difference and, um, and, and very aware that those skills are gonna transcend the sort of intra-group dynamics to the inter-group dynamics that we know our kids are gonna face in the world. Um, so if you have any concerns about sort of, you know, 50% of our, of our families say, again, too Jewish and 50% say not Jewish enough, you know, um, I can assure you that this beautiful environment is really healthy and thoughtful and intentional and that you may not, you may feel like an outsider, but in some way, so does everyone. Um, so, and if you want to talk to me or anyone else on our team about this, please follow up one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I wanted to just share a few, because we are approaching a really big holiday, and even though we're home and we're in social distancing and it doesn't feel like Passover, it's coming up, guys, and it's a big one, and we're the students on the call. See, if you were here, if you were at school, then we would be doing a lot more, you know, getting you all revved up for Passover, but you're here on the screen, so I just wanted to share a few teachings. Um, that are very powerful. Hold on, okay. Um, okay, so this one is for the parents. Um, does anyone recognize it? Do you see it? The four sons? Yeah, the four sons, great. And this is one of my favorite, uh, you know, the Haggadah is the Jewish, is the book that, um, you know, goes through the Passover Seder that we read on the Passover Seder. And the four sons is one of the most famous uh, parts of the Passover Seder where there is a wicked son, an evil son, a simple son, the son who doesn't even know how to ask. And I love, as if I have three boys and they're all really different. Um, they're 10, eight, and six. And I love this as a parent because it shows us that kids are dealt to us like a deck of playing cards you know you know you know you get what you get and you don't get upset and kids are so different but the top mm. word in hebrew reads baruch which means blessed so no the artist is saying no matter what type of child you have 
he or she is blessed. And I think in some ways, this is a philosophy of parenting, but it's also very much a philosophy of education in the sense that again, and I think all schools, we, we don't have a type. We want to know who your child is. And all of them are blessed. And then it's our job, it's on us to customize, individualize, challenge, grow the student. Um, you know, in traditional re uh, renderings of the Haggadah, the, the smart son, the, the wise son is always the best. But in this rendering, they're all just different. And you can see they're all looking at the Torah, the book in a different way. Um, so I love that because I think it's actually a great philosophical statement about education and parenting all at once. Um, and then, let's see, one last thing. I'll ask somebody to read, maybe one of the students. Hold on. Oh, okay. So this is a poem um, that one of my favorite poets, he's a modern Israeli Hebrew poet, a Yehuda Amichai. Um, when I was in college, I remember I took the train in uh, from, I, from Connecticut into New York City and I went with my grandmother who was elderly at the time to hear him speak at City College. I'll never forget um, hearing him talk about his poetry. And I think this poem, and I'll send it out to all of you um, after if you're interested. Um, as, I, as, as our family and as we're thinking about Passover and this holiday that feels so topsy-turvy right now, you know, it, it's meant to be celebrated with extended family, with grandparents, and here we are so separate from grandparents and relatives. And thinking about the generations and what we do again every day is think about the generations and think about what is our job? What do we teach? What do we let our students explore? What do we insist on? Where do we give? Um, I just love this poem because I think it sort of talks a lot about this intergenerational dynamic for both teachers and parents. So do one of our amazing seniors who are on the call want to read it for me? Nathan, you're up. Awesome. Uh, just to check, can everybody hear me? Okay, cool. Um, by the thumbs up, I figure that means people can hear me. My father was a god and didn't know it, or did not know it. He gave me the Ten Commandments, neither in thunder nor in fury, neither in fire nor in cloud, but rather in gentleness and love. And he added caresses and kind words, and he added, I beg you and please. And he sang, keep and remember the Shabbat. In a single melody, and, um, and he pleaded and cried quietly between one utterance and the next. Do not take the name of God in vain. Do not take it not in vain, I beg you. Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And he hugged me tightly and whispered in my ear, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not murder. And he put the palms of his open hands on my head with the Yom Kippur blessing. Honor, love, in order that your days might be long on the earth. And my father's voice was white like the hair on his head. Later on, he turned his face to me one last time like on the day when he died in my arms and said, I want to add two to the Ten Commandments, the Eleventh Commandment, thou shalt not change, and the Twelfth Commandment, thou must surely change. So said my father, and then he turned from me and walked off, disappearing into his strange distances. Thank you, Nathan. I love that poem as we approach Passover and think about what we're doing as parents and teachers. And in many ways as parents, we are our first teachers. Um, we, wanna, we, want our student, or we want our children to appreciate tradition and learning, but we also insist that they must change and interpret it through their own lens. Um, and I think that's particularly powerful as we're spending so much time intergenerationally right now with our children. Um, the push and pull of tradition and change of interpretation of forgetting, of knowing, um, you know, these are, this is complex, ambitious mission of our school. Um, and I, I invite you to join us and invite you into the complexity and the ambition. Um, it's values, it's teaching, it's purpose, it's meaning, it's curiosity, it's relationships, it's tough love. I mean, none of these things are clear cut and, um, in some ways, um, they are sometimes intention, um, but we're thinking very deeply about them and we are 
so thrilled to meet the new group of students and get to know them and to most importantly grow and challenge them and see who they, see who they will become. I mean, that is our slogan and that is the truth. Um, I know that everyone on this call, current GAN parents, current GAN students, admission staff are more than happy to follow up one-on-one. -on -one. I can put my uh, email in the chat if you want to follow up. Um, for now, it will have to be a Zoom call, but till we meet again in person. Uh, next year, you know, in Jerusalem, next year in person. Um, so be well, everyone. Thank you for coming uh, to this call in Zoom. Um, be in touch and, and just reach out if you have any questions. Thank you to Emily and to Wendy for organizing this event. I'm gonna we, we do appreciations again, and to thank all you, of us in admission, yeah, and to all and to Gina who's here too. And thank you to all of our current parents and students for joining us tonight. I know you've been on Zoom all day, so thank you, thank you. Okay, happy Passover, Chag Sameach. This will be posted on our accepted students' parents page, as will all of our information. Um, we'll ask our students if it's okay with them if we can post their email addresses. But we're here to answer your questions. We know it's hard to make these decisions when you're not able to come back in person, but we want to help you do that so we can see you again next year. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Hockman. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, in, in person. <laughs> <laughs>